Hey chocolate friends, Thursday, let's talk about a chocolate maker. Today I'm going to talk about this chocolate maker, Letterpress, out of Los Angeles, California in the United States. I believe they were the first bean to bar maker in Los Angeles. Uh, founded in 2014 by David and Corey Menkes, um, husband and wife team, or partners. Um, Corey is, she uh, has a bachelor's of science from the University of California, Santa Cruz. Um, she's also the co-owner of what's called Soro Sweets, which is a commercial kitchen where they make um, letterpress, but they also run that kitchen for others to rent out. And then David is, was both, um, a digital artist, graphic designer, and he has worked um, in like, he does like color and lighting for um, cartoon things and CGI and stuff like that. So he's worked on How to Train Your Dragon, um, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Kung Fu Panda 3, Men in Black 3, Arthur Christmas Smallfoot, Spider-Man, No Way Home. So lots of cool things that he's worked on. So how did they get into chocolate? So it's kind of an interesting story. Um, so they started in 2014, but in 2011, they took a trip to a Caribbean island, St. Lucia, and they saw a cacao tree for the first time. And they asked their guide about it, and he said, uh, yeah, that's a cacao tree. Do you want to go see a farm and a fermentary? And they're like, yes. <laughs> so they went and they saw all that and they tried fresh cacao for the first time and saw the process. And when they came back to LA off of their vacation, they went to a local cheese shop and started sampling craft chocolate. So they bought a Bona uh, porcelain bar, which I suspect they probably spent around $21 on. 2021 is where that bar normally lands. So the most they'd ever spend on chocolate before, but it tasted nothing like they had ever had before. And that was kind of how their journey into chocolate started. So David started a chocolate blog called Little Brown Squares. And at the time he was working at um, DreamWorks and he always had chocolate on his desk and people would come by during the day and he'd give him a sample and tell him about the maker and the terroir and all of the things that us crazy chocolate people want to talk about all the time. <laughs> and so he got the um, nickname of Chocolate Dave and eventually HR called him and said, look, you're being very distracting. Uh, why don't you do this on your lunch break instead? And so he started the DreamWorks Chocolate Society. So that went on for a while and, and he never really wanted to make chocolate. But in 2013, he contacted an old producer friend of his that was from Guatemala and asked him, what did, what did he know about cacao? What, what, what can you tell him about it? And he said, well, my dad has a farm and we grow it. So why don't you come down and see? So he went to visit him in Guatemala, visited the farm, brought back some beans, started experimenting. He started where a lot of chocolate makers start, where they should start because they get great information there. Chocolate alchemy. John Nancy has had such an influence on bean to bar chocolate. Uh, so he started making his own little micro batches of chocolate with beans. Um, he would take them into his DreamWorks Chocolate Society and they would do blind tastings and he would sneak his chocolate in there. And people would be like, this isn't good chocolate. I don't like that chocolate. <laughs> don't get that one again. So um, that was a little bit disappointing, but he kept going. So in 2013, he started writing for Chocolate Connoisseur, which is, was an online magazine. Um, in 2014, that's when it all started. They started making, they bought some equipment, started making chocolate in their apartment. Um, took them about a year and a half how to proper, learn how to properly temper. They did it under the LA Cottage Food License, so lots of people do it that way too. Uh, in 2016, LA Weekly ran an article, ran a piece on them and their landlord found out. And the landlord said, look, you cannot be running a business out of your apartment. You need to wrap this up and get rid of it or I'm going to have to evict you. And so they're like, ah. Um, they found a shared kitchen down the street, luckily, and they didn't get evicted. 
but from then on they've been producing chocolate um, letterpress chocolate and they are really so they like I said they were never really interested in producing chocolate but kind of yes producing chocolate but also making a difference to the farmers and the people down there so I actually have two bars from them right now I have this one which is a letterpress from Sao Tome, which is an island off the coast of the west coast of Africa. And this is a limited edition bar, but I also have their, this is one of their um, standard bars that they ha often have in their lineup. So one of the things also I want to talk about is this beautiful packaging. And wait till you see when I open this, their mold is incredible. So it's one of those ones when you see it, you know it, and you will never forget it. <laughs> it's lovely. So let's flip the camera around and we will open this bar from Costa Rica and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. All right, so let's talk about letterpress. So when David was a kid, he used to collect airmail stamps and he also always loved planes, which was kind of the inspiration for their um, packaging and mold. Specifically, the logo came from the fact that um, the mountains, David is from the mountains, and the plane, they fly around all over the place to get cacao. Uh, also, both David and Corey worked as docents at the International Printing Museum in Carson, California. And they discovered that there was a lot of similarities between letterpress printing and chocolate. So they were both handcrafted. They both used molds, kind of similarities there. So that's also where the name came from. So a stamp collector, <laughs> I collect stamps too. So I, I can relate to that um, passion. So let's take a look. So I told you about the name and this uh, the logo that comes from uh, probably the first maker, the first beans bar maker in Los Angeles. These beans are from Hacienda Azul out of Costa Rica. Um, that is a small farm. There's like eight people that work on it. It's near, uh, it's in rural Costa Rica, near um, uh, the Cati Institute, which is a pretty famous agricultural university for Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, they do do things with regard to chocolate. So in the same area, 70% uh, dark. They have won an award from the Academy of Chocolate 2019, so fairly recent. They are a two ingredient bar, so just cacao beans and cane sugar, both organic. Uh, let's see. So they, I find that letterpress kind of does a medium roast most of the time. They're not a hard roast or a light roast. They're kind of a medium roast. Uh, they say they grind for 48 hours, age for at least a month. There are some people that will say aging makes a difference. Some that will say it makes no difference. <laughs> Oh, okay, so this is what I just told you about the farm. We don't want to read the tasting notes. They've got a batch number and a best buy date. Okay, so let's open this up and take a look. You might be wondering why I don't like to read the tasting notes before I taste the bar. And that's because our brains are highly suggestive. So if I read that I'm going to taste something, then your brain will probably say, oh, that's what that is. The bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. Most excellent quote. Yes, we should all be paying more for our chocolate, especially for high quality craft beans like in craft chocolate. Okay, so I'll take this out of the plastic here and you will see the beautiful mold, such intricate detail. And look at this bar, it looks so nice, right? So clean and so good. Very good, that year and a half of tempering practice did well. <laughs> All right, so look at the details on this mold. Isn't that just incredible? It's like a letterpress stamp, it's just beautiful. Just lovely. The color here is, it's pretty dark brown um, for a bean to bar. So nice dark, dark brown. 
Look at, I just can look at this all day. Look at the detail on that, you guys. And the smell is incredible too. So it doesn't look like it has any problems with tempering. Let's, I hate to break such beautiful bars like this. <laughs> all right, let's listen to the snap. I'll put it close to my mic. Good snap, nice snap for dark. Take a look at that inside, looks even. Doesn't look like it has any problems with tempering. Looks good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to, because cocoa butter is, um, the melting temperature of cocoa butter is very close to human body temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rub my thumb on the back to warm it up a little bit and release some of those volatile compounds and get the aromas out and then I will taste it and we'll come back and talk about it. So let's give it a try. All right, so this is not, I wouldn't call this a complex bar, but it's a pleasant bar. It has um, aroma notes of sunflower and cocoa. I want to say sunflower oil, not sunflower seeds, but I don't know why I want to say that. Um, when you taste it, it's got a little bit of bitterness to it, but not unpleasant. It has a um, nuttiness. You do get the sunflower oil, sunflower seed flavor in there. When I let it, it's got a nice melt. It's a slow but smooth melt. It's got, um, when I let it melt smooth, I get just nuttiness and sunflower seed. Uh, as it's going, I get a little bit of astringency at the top of my mouth. Um, and if I let it just melt, it's pretty much a consistent sunflower note. But if I chew it, I get a little bit of a citrus lemon note in there, just under, just an undertone at the end. It's got a long, aftertaste, um, bitter, slightly bitter, a little bit of sunflower in there as well. So it's an interesting bar. I use their um, Belize bar quite often in my tastings because it's got a very strong nut note to it that's easy for people to identify. So that's why I use it in, my, in some of my tastings. But this is also um, a note it's quite easy to identify. It's not something where you're gonna think, oh, that taster's making up this flavor. It doesn't taste like sunflower seeds. <laughs> no, it's definitely there and you can taste it. You'll have to work to pick out the other notes in there, but um, you'll definitely get the note in there. So that is beautiful letterpress chocolate out of Los Angeles. Let's flip the camera around and we will finish up. All right, so when I asked David one of the things or something that he was most proud of of his business, he said they're most proud of the Uke Alley and the Tranquilidad Bar. So the Uke Alley is something where I think they may have been the first ones to have beans out of there working with Dan O'Doherty out of Cacao Services. Um, that area used to be known for growing cocaine and um, there's been initiatives going in trying to get the farmers to change over to a different kind of crop that will become sustainable for them. So cacao was one of them that was brought in and they were some of the first people to make with Ukele. Uh, but Ukele is also known for having a lot of CCN 51, which is like a bad word in cacao. <laughs> it's a kind of um, variety that a lot of people's uh, a lot of people frown on as not having much flavor and requiring intensive inputs into the agricultural process. But um, their ukele bar is really nice, and it's really great because you're supporting these farmers in that have made a choice to grow something other than cocaine. And so that's fantastic that um, Dan and David are doing that in supporting these farmers. And they're making great bars out of CCN 51, which a lot of people say it can't be done, but they're doing it. Their Tranquilidad bar is also amazing. Um, it's, it wins awards, it's really good. So if you see that, try that as well. So 
it's still just the two of them, just uh, David and Corey making chocolate in their kit in their commercial kitchen. So if you ever see letterpress, make sure to give it a try. It is worth trying some of their bars. Um, I always like to try their limited editions because it's fun to see how they're experimenting. And that's all I have to say about letterpress chocolate. So if you've had a letterpress chocolate limited edition that you love, let me know. I want to know which ones you love. Um, as well as the ones that I've heard that are good from other people. So be sure to, I think it's over here, hover over this opening chocolate thing and subscribe so that we can hang out every Thursday and talk about all the amazing chocolate things that there are out there in the world. And I hope that I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.